So in Kalu Vision, um, to add micro C or a scanner to our project, we simply need to go back, manage runtime environment and add it. So what we have to do is we have to click over here, this diamond icon, and then this opens. When that is done, we we'll click under Artus. And when you come to Artus, by default, free Artus is selected. But to find Micron, you click this drop down and then you select Micron. And then once it is selected, you take to add the version. We're using the version 3, Micro C OS 3. So you click to add this and then you take over here and then you take over here as well. Once that is done, you just click OK. So for those of you who already have a pre-installed version of Kalu Vision, who didn't go through the installation um, section with us, um, perhaps you don't have the Artus module installed as part of your car you vision all you need to do is click this icon over here the pack installer and when you click it it will take a while to load all the packs available and then from here you can install the pack for Artus so this is what the pack installer looks like when it's done. Here are some of the packs available that I could add to my system, my Kalu Vision. And here it indicates the packs that I've not installed and those I've installed already. Something like this, this middleware I need to update. I can just click to update it. My Micron Artos is up to date because I've installed it. If you don't have it installed, you would see the word install over here. So all you need to do is, if you couldn't find Micron Artos under your Manage Runtime Environment, you just need to come to Pack Installer, you would see Micron Artos, and then they'll be installed here, just like this one has installed, I've not installed it. So then when you click the install, it will install Micron Artos for you. In the same way, for free Artos, it's here for CMC's free Artos, you can find it here too. I've installed CMC's free Artos as well. If you want to install it, you just come over here. If you don't have it already installed and you want to install it, you come over here and this word here, my says up to date because my is installed and it is updated. If you don't have it, you would see the word install over here and then you just click it. And once you do that, it will take you through the installation process. And the next time you go to manage runtime environment, you would have the option to select the Artus. So um, this is it, let's move on. So I'll just close this. Right, so this is our first application. So we've included Micron to our project. You can see that there's a new package over here under project. And over here I can I can expand here. And when I expand under Artus, I've got all the Micron files here and they are locked. These files are locked because we're not expected to edit any of these files. Throughout these course, we'll be uh, throughout the course we'll be coming to some of these files to look at the data structures, the data types, and how some of the um, the kernel components are implemented in these files. So, um, to add Micron to our project proper, all we have to do is add the os.h header file, and you do that by simply right clicking over here, right click, and then insert include file, and there you select os.h. So now Micron is added. As you can see over here so let's create our very first Micron task so in Micron just to give you a very short introduction practically each task requires um, a task control block known as the TCB which we shall talk a lot about in this course and each task also requires a stack so you've got to allocate a TCB and a stack for the task and the TCB is of type OSTCB so we just type OSTCB and then we just call this particular, we call this particular one app task TCB. And I would explain why it is app task. In the language of Micron, the, um, the very first task you create is known as the app task start. So we're going to call this task that we're going to create app task start. The convention in Micron is you create one task and then this task will run for a while and then it will judge how much work your CPU is doing to gather some statistics based on that this task can optimize the entire kernel so then you create this task and then from this first task you can create other tasks that is how Micron applications are professionally designed however you, you can still create any number of tasks all at once if you want but anyway this very first task is often called the app task start. So then the thread control block of this task is called the app task 
start TCB. So after that, we allocate a stack and then we use type CPU STK. And this is just a data type. This is a uint32 type. So all of these are uh, just standard data types renamed in Micron. There's actually a lesson on data types where we will just go and show what all these names mean, like OSTCB and CPU stack. This is just U in 32 type. You have such you know cryptic names in the um in the Micron documentation. All of it will be explained. So we um we allocate a stack and we do this by declaring as declared over here CPU STK. And then I'll just bring this over here. And it's basically a stack structure. We're calling this an array, this an array, U in 32, and the name of the array is up task stat stk. And this is the size of the array. So this is the stack basically. A stack is you allocate a stack basically by creating a U in 32 type array. So that's what I've just done here, but it's written in the fancy name of Micron OS. So CPU SDK U in 32, this is the name of the array. So once we've created this, we're going to use the OS task create function. And guess what? The OS task create function has 13 arguments. So we've got to deal with 13 different arguments. Most of them really, you don't need them for very simple applications. They are both only three important ones, which is the a pointer to the TCB that we've just declared, and then a pointer to the stack, the top of the stack, the stack size, and other things like that. So actually, rather than going into the detail of everything in this lesson, I'll just do things quickly so that for the rest of the lesson, we you know take everything one by one. So of course, we don't need this here. We write in a real-time application. We don't need this while one loop in the main function. So I'm just going to clean this and I'm going to um, space this out a bit by right, coming down here. So also one other thing, we can declare an error type to help us monitor the initialization and the creation of objects, whether objects were created su uh, successfully. We can declare OS error, OS ERR, and then we'll call it OS, we can just call this, this is also just an integer type, OSERR, then we call this error. And once that is done, we can just initialize the, the OS by using the OS in its API. And the OS in its API takes one argument and the argument is the error variable we created. If the initialization isn't successful, it's going to send an error code into the error variable that we just created so I'm just going to put this as the argument OSERR, like this, the error. So then once that is done, actually I'm going to declare, I'm going to bring all of the components of the OS create function at once. And then I'll just take you through it. But later on, you'll be writing it all on your own and doing amazing stuff with it. So this is, a, this is the function OS create because the function has so many arguments you don't see the arguments arranged horizontally. They are rather arranged vertically. This argument number one, a pointer to the thread control block or the task control block. So this OSTCB takes the address over here. This is the TCB we just declared for this task. And this one here is the second argument is the name of the task. And this argument is actually not used. This argument is just for debugging purposes so we can give our task a name and I'm calling this up task start. And then this one here, this third argument is a pointer to the task function. So remember a task is just like any other C function. We just, you know, we just write a function. It's sometimes it's got special parameters. Some of them take two or three arguments and there are two types of tasks basically. We'll talk more about all of this in the course. There is the run to completion task, which runs and then doesn't return any value or object. And there's the normal task that runs in the infinite loop. So anyway, we have to create a task function. So this third argument is a pointer to that task function. Actually, I'm going to change this function name to counter. So I'm going to, um, in Micron, tasks are written, are declared as void with one argument so i'm going to call void okay let's just call this task counter and then it takes 
one argument and later on we'll see the usefulness of this argument that the task takes and this is often written as this this is the conventional way of writing this so with this I can just say while well, one so this, this is going to be our task function for this very first task but in Micron one over here is given a name it's called death true so I can just say def true here and this means while wow, one is declared and defined somewhere as one so this is the language used in Micron so in this course we'll be using the formal language quite often so that you can have you know a professional idea of how to you know work with Micron and be able to read other um, codes developed in Micron Micron is very very popular it's one of the best real-time operating systems out there so yeah uh, being able to use it properly not just as a hobbyist is very important and I'm going to endeavor to ensure we uh, we stick to the conventions and the way it's done professionally with this real-time kernel so anyway this is our task our task function so this is the name right so we can just change the name here initially yeah, I wanted to call it this but to prove this to you yeah so this is our task function now and um, we've got this but the reason why this is yeah it takes the address of the variable we just declared so I have to put the ambassador here like this okay and now that is cured so yeah that's argument number three and um, this argument this forward argument we'll talk about it later this is simply the priority on the task and I'm giving it priority one in Micron. the lowest priority means the most important task and like I said the very first task usually it's recommended only one task should be created in the main function and this task is often known as the app task start so this task is given the highest priority from this task other tasks are created so in future lessons we're going to create this task and we're going to come into the task function of this task and create other tasks within this tasks function yeah, I've mentioned a lot of tasks in this very simple sentence. Bear with me. So then, then we have a pointer to our stack. Uh, we have a pointer to the top of stack, as well as a pointer to the stack itself. And then we declare the stack size. Um, the stack size is 128, as declared over here. This parameter is the stack size, 128. So I'll leave the other parameters without you know saturating your mind with this very first project. So we leave all these parameters and what we want to do is take our counter, this counter that we were incrementing, I'll just put it over here to run the increment counter plus plus. And um, that should be done. So that's all there is. And our very first Micron OS 3 real-time kernel is ready. Our very first application using this kernel is ready. We can rebuild, I'll click over here. And once it is done rebuilding, I'll just click over here to download onto my board and download is complete in the same way I come back to debug view and then I observe the um, the variable increase and this time it's running in the kernel the Shechla is what is running this thread okay that's a problem our, our variable isn't moving yeah we actually need to start the Shechla we've not started the Shechla sorry about that we need to call an API over here known as OS start this one starts the the operating system OS starts like this and this also takes the the arrow as argument so we have to check whether it started successfully so we pass the error here like this and um, this should be fine now just click over here to rebuild and then click here to download onto my board and once that is done I come to debug view okay and I click here and as you can see our variable is incrementing our code is running um, so this is the getting started project of this very exciting course so this is all there is for this particular project and I shall see you in the next lesson